Hi everyone, in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to take macro photographs like these. I will show you how to set up focus bracketing or focus shifting to take hundreds of images to then stitch together to make one masterpiece using post-production software. I will also share my techniques like using lighting and a polarizer to get the best shots in camera. Not only are some of these photographs taken with a standard macro lens, but I also capture some of them with a telephoto lens. Now for some of us, spring can be cold, gray, and wet, and lack the inspiration to get out and photograph, which is why I wanted to start this episode off with a cinematic entry into the beauty of spring. So before we kick things off, here is spring as I see it. Welcome to my channel. It is springtime and I am out photographing some flowers. And there's quite a few of them actually off this way. So I've got my tripod set up, got a macro lens on here. And what I'm excited to kind of share with you today is some macro tips, being able to set up your camera and shoot multiple shots all at different focuses so that you can stack them together to get some really full, clear, nice depth of field in your macro shots. Because with the macro lens and getting really close, your depth of field is gonna be quite shallow, especially if you're like me, I've got the 105 mil F2.8 Nikon lens, and it's actually quite a long lens, uh, not quite a telephoto, uh, but, 100 mils is quite long. So we shallow our depth of field by controlling the aperture. So wide open aperture to let a lot of light in is gonna shorten that depth of field. If you have a longer lens, so telephoto lenses, the longer the lens, the shallow or the depth of field you're gonna have. And then the last thing is how close you get. So the closer I get to my subject and what I'm shooting, it's gonna, be a ha it's gonna have a shallower depth of field. So on the flip side, if you have a super wide angle lens, you're far away from the mountains, everything is gonna be in focus. So that's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Now, before I get started, if you are new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I am a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. Whether you're here to learn, be inspired, or simply enjoy some stunning visuals, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this. Here's the flower right here. Got everything all set up on the tripod. And what I can do is I can go into the menu settings and just under this camera icon, I can go down to the focused shift shooting. And when I click that, I can select the number of shots I want, the focus step width. So if I want really tight focus from one shot to the next, I wanna be in the narrow. And if you're further away, like this is macro photography, so maybe if I was shooting, say, a, uh, you know, a waterfall or something a little bit more of a landscape, not something so small, I might wanna go 
a little bit wider here in this feature, uh, but for a flower doing macro, I'm gonna do uh, narrow. So I do narrow, click OK. Then I go down to interval until next shot. It's just zero seconds. I don't need to wait from one shot to the next. First frame exposure lock. So I don't want my exposure changing. Um, so I'm gonna lock that, which is very important. And then I can go ahead and click start. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is that you can put all of these images into their own folder as well as reset the filing numbering so that later on when you're exporting them and putting them into your computer, they're nicely organized. Now I have a few things uh, that can help me with my macro photography. One is lighting. If I'm not getting the right light, especially in the woods here, um, I can actually apply some lighting. Some people use flashes and they use, they have diffusers on top. Um, I've got this uh, light right here, and this is from Aperture. They're not sponsoring me or anything. I just like this little light that I use uh, for doing video and stuff. Uh, but I can actually change the warmth on this. So I can turn it up and down, so that's great. Uh, but I can also change it to really warm lighting or cool lighting. So back here with my subject, I can uh, actually apply some lighting and it looks pretty good. Uh, now you can disconnect, it's got a little tripod here. Um, so I've had that so I can set that up and be hands free. Uh, but you can also take it apart and uh, right here, this can be put onto your hot shoe of your camera. Get rid of my eyes here. So that can actually slide onto the top of your camera and you can use it for other purposes like video and stuff to kind of light up, light up a scene. Another thing is, is I like using polarizers sometimes in the woods. All of these uh, leafy greens, now these are invasive, so ripping that up is okay. But these are kind of waxy. They got a lot of pollen on them, so kind of dirty right now and I was hoping to photograph some of these so I may have to do some cleaning uh, but these are pretty waxy and when the light hits it it, it kind of gives it a dull color the reflection is quite gray and using a polarizer can remove that reflection on uh, greenery in the woods okay so I'm gonna use this light and I'm gonna apply some sort of a sunlight to it almost like it's coming through the forest here and let me just take a little video here on my Z9. So as I apply that, it kind of just brings in some, definitely some more depth to the image. The leaves kind of give a bit more of a 3D, three-dimensional look to them, seeing those shadows. And it's quite nice, because even the pollen little stems there in the center are kind of casting some shadows. Let's do 50 shots and let us hit start. Now, once you have all of these shots, what do you do with it? Well, you go back to a program that can go ahead and merge them all into one image. Okay, I'm gonna jump forward in time just for this moment to show you on the computer what I just did. Here are all my images in Lightroom. I'm gonna make some slight adjustments, kind of balancing out the exposure, saturation, that sort of thing. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna highlight all of the images that I took, right click, then go to edit in, and then down to open in layers in Photoshop. Okay, so once all the images are in Photoshop, you wanna highlight all of them again, and then go up to auto align layers and then auto blend layers. So you see them both here, auto align and auto blend. So you'll do the auto align so that they're all lined up perfectly and then you'll blend them all. So you got this beautiful sharp image all the way through. Lovely, okay. If you don't have this feature on your camera where you can just tell it to move its focus perfectly to the next one and leave it on the tripod, you will have to do it manually. So each shot, you're up here, you're slowly turning your focus ring on your lens to take the next shot, make a slight adjustment, make the next shot, and you have to do that manually. So here's the shot with just basic adjustments. 
And here's with a lot more editing. I really wanted to highlight the pollen that is on the little lines and grooves of the leaves down below. And here is the shot that I took after I applied some lighting with my nice little aperture light. And let me know what you guys think. Okay, so here's my next setup right here. And I really like that flower right there. Let's see what it looks like. I've got a lot of this brown, which I really like, so it's not all green. And then wrapped up and around this white flower here is greenery with some highlights. And I'm not even gonna use a polarizer right there. I'm just gonna see what it looks like. Now what's important is if you are doing stacked images, and you're gonna set up this program. One is wind. <laughs> you wanna be shooting at a fast enough shutter that if there's any movement, you're cap capturing sharp images. So that's a given. You also wanna go on a day that isn't super windy because uh, aligning all of those images, if they're really moving around, might screw up your images. So it's kind of calm here. There is a little bit of a breeze, so fingers crossed the images work out. And then the last very crucial uh, tip is to focus on the part that you want in focus that's closest to you. And even go a little bit further just to make sure that you've gotten that part sharp and in focus. Because when you press go on this program for the, the focus shift shooting, it'll start where you're at and slowly focus inward. And uh, yeah. So start, I, I usually do peak focus on here. They're highlighted blue or, or red, um, but it shows me my focus with a very highlighted color. And I pick the closest point um, and even make it go a little bit out of focus so that when I press start, it slowly goes into focus and then goes throughout the whole subject, capturing it all in one. So hopefully that's an ex enough explanation on that. Now I'm ready just to get some compositions. There's more new life to photograph uh, that I wanna show you guys. Uh, so stick around, I've got some other cool ideas that I think you'll be interested in. So for ma macro photography, you don't always need a macro lens. I mean, I shoot a lot of um, macro with my telephoto. Now, some telephoto allow you to get closer. Uh, some of them are further away, and that's just because of the way they're designed and set up. There's a minimum focal distance that you can get. And here I've got a flower way off there in the back. So this is my 400 f 4.5 lens. Having a longer lens allows me to put more things in the foreground as well as the background to kind of create a bit of an environment. But since it is a longer lens, I can still get a really shallow depth of field. Now we can control depth of field three ways, like I said before. You can either open up the aperture as wide as you can, which gives you shallower depth of field, or close it down to get a larger depth of field. Now, if we get closer to the subject, we also get a shorter and shallower depth of field. Last would be focal length. The longer the lens, the shallower your depth of field is gonna be. So I can get fairly close to the subject and I have a longer lens. So I'm gonna get a really nice creamy background and foreground, which is pretty cool. Now keep in mind, the shallower the depth of field you have, the more shots you need for a complete image. I mean, up to your taste, of course. This photo right here is 150 images all jammed together to make this shot. I decided to go for a drive and it's the middle of the day. I didn't expect to go photographing, but seeing this field, this is at a buddy's place and look at all the flowers out here beautiful flowers and there's just an unbelievable amount of bees and then you got this tree this full tree is in bloom and this is the spot where I did some photography of the 
of the eagles here. This is their nest. Mama's in there right now, and I think she has one or two young, and then Papa is up in the trees up here. So yeah, I was, uh, I thought maybe I'll, I'll do some filming and photographing of the uh, eagles. And then I looked out here and I thought, wow, what a great opportunity to, to take some photos of bees. For those of you who like filming, I like filming at 120 frames per second so I can slow it way down. Especially for something like this, where bees uh, move from flower to flower so fast, so quick that you can't really enjoy it and understand even as they're crawling over and collecting the, the pollen, you know, you can't really enjoy it unless you kind of slow things down. So hopefully I got some photographs since it's so bright out. Uh, my shutter speed can be up nice and high as well as my f-stop can be closed down to give me a little bit more depth of field so that I get less uh, throwaway images. I want to be able to try and get that B um, in focus. It's, uh, it's a great little macro lens here and this is the 400 4.5 Nikon lens that I'm using and I actually got a 1.4 teleconverter on here to really just create that compression of the background and the foreground kind of really mushing together and it gives me this sense of of macro look right because you're, you're dealing with small little bees with a blown out background um, and foreground uh, that's nice and smooth At a workshop actually I got a few workshops if you want to join me and another professional photographer we're gonna be photographing here on Vancouver Island giant trees waterfalls some waterfalls cascading into the ocean and uh, we're gonna be learning composition and uh, it's very exciting I have other workshops uh, that are happening too so where should they go go to madshannon.ca slash workshops if you want to more information and to sign up. How many spots are available on that one? Oh, so the one on Vancouver Island, I think I only got a couple spots left. So email me if you're not sure about any of the details, how to get here, that sort of thing. It will be pretty cool. <laughs> so it's raining right now. Uh, I decided to go hands-free to see what you can get when it's raining out, so it's gray. But take a look a little closer here. All of these leaves, especially these, the pattern here, kind of give it a really shiny and silver look to it. So I think I got some cool patterns here, but we'll walk and talk and I'll explain a little bit more my setup and what we're doing. So the other day, I was out photographing and we had some sunlight. I actually used the light to go ahead and kind of add some artificial lighting to it. Today, it's wet and rainy, and I guess this is spring for a lot of people, where you might have to get out and get inspired to take some photos, because the weather is kind of crappy. And we're just walking along this path, seeing what sort of things we can see. So I'm getting a shot here. Take a look at this. So it's an invasive plant, it's English ivy. It's growing all over the place here. People do come with machetes and cut it away. Um, but this pattern right here where it's coming up this trunk, the green against the, the bark, which is a nice red. Okay, so if you're not savvy like me on plants and plant species, uh, well now you don't really need an app. You can just take a photo. So I took a photo with <laughs> <laughs> if you can get it with flowers, if it's flowering, then it's easier to identify. And then on your phone, this is the iPhone, you hit the I here and it'll look it up. So this is the yellow archangel, which is part of the dead nettle uh, plant species. My wife knew about that because 
the stalk, the stem is square. So look at that. If you, I don't know if you could see right at the very end. Yeah, you got it? Yeah, I got it. Very nice. These are invasive. So just like the uh, English ivy, trying to eradicate and move some of this out. Um, but they make for great photos. Now here's kind of the collection of images that I captured during this episode. I arranged them from one to six. Let me know which one stands out, which one's your favorite, and uh, be kind of good feedback for everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this episode, please give me that thumbs up. It really helps out this episode and the channel. And if you aren't subscribed, think about subscribing. And I will see you on the next adventure. Ciao.